Good evening and welcome to Hawaii News for You at the end of National TV Turnoff Week. And to those viewers taking part in that, congratulations on your willpower. In the news this week, to cement the special relationship, Bill Clinton takes Tony Blair for a walk around the White House garden. <laughs> There's evidence that dangerous aliens have been passing messages to their agents on Earth. And in Russia, rare home movie footage is discovered of Boris Yeltsin's christening. <laughs> On uh, Ian Hislop's team is a woman who left the BBC because it was full of middle-class patronising men, but bless her, she managed to park her car outside the studio so she can be with us tonight. Janet Street Porter. <laughs> And with Paul Merton tonight is a Daily Telegraph journalist who last year took a month off to spend some time on his own. He stood as a Conservative candidate in Wales, <laughs> Boris Johnson. <laughs> Round one is where we're mathematically obliged to begin. Uh, Ian and Janet. It's a bus. Oh, I know. Oh, that's a nuclear wise. thing, nuclear yeah. Wise. That looks like Dune Ray. Oh, Tony Blair, faith healing. Oh, he's still going on. <laughs> he's taken a whole load of nuclear waste and dumped it in Scotland. Because nobody else wants it. And it's not going to hurt us anyway. It's a long way away from us, isn't it? What, yeah. Scotland? Or Georgia. I think they're taking it from Georgia to Scotland. Yeah, so I know. So it gets a bit nearer. Yeah, but not that near. <laughs> <laughs> we apologise to our Scottish viewers. <laughs> and how did it get over here? Um, by bus. <laughs> The Georgians said it's too dangerous to have here, lunatics might turn it into a weapon, we'll put it on a bus and it'll get to Dune Ray. Dune Ray is famous for something else that happened in the 50s, were you aware of this? They were going to build a reactor and let it uh, gradually run out of control. Oh, kind of rehearsal for Doomsday. Mm. It's spooky that Dune Ray and Doomsday rhyme. Yeah, I inadvertently did that. Can't, mm. we have the, can't the nuclear waste go to the dome instead? <laughs> well, that's very near your house, isn't it? Yeah, but I could probably move up to Scotland and build another <laughs> Fair enough, uh, which is where we came in, I think. Uh, this is the uh, nuclear material that uh, Britain is to receive from Georgia. Uh, there were fears that uh, unless this uranium was brought to the West, it might be seized by agents working for Saddam Hussein. But now Britain can be confident that Iraq won't get their hands on any weapons of mass destruction without paying us a fair price first. <laughs> uh, Paul and Boris. Uh, children in the classroom, children doing homework. This is, um, oh, there's, um... No one knows who he is, he's a Conservative. He, no, he is the Conservative, I know exactly, he, he is the Conservative spokesman for education. Oh, I always forget Boris is the last Conservative on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> I am a dying the brain. continuity wing. <laughs> the continuity <laughs> wing? Continuity wing of the Conservative Party, that's right. Yeah, so, uh, that's next what, on that's BBC what, Two, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I'm, you know, I'm, just, I'm just, you know, batting for batting for an ideology that's been burgled by, 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 by someone else. I suppose that's what I'm doing fundamentally. That's it. <laughs> I think we're all with you, Boris. <laughs> I have a sense of overwhelming support. That's what, uh, <laughs> so is it four year olds have to do 20 minutes of homework a night? Uh, that's part of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And One... 20 year olds have to do four minutes of homework a night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just switches around, yeah. <laughs> well, on the subject of education, a Angus, if I may call you Angus. I <laughs> Since you, bought, since you bring up the subject of education, I, you, I noticed you loitering in my, <laughs> in my daughter's, in my daughter's playground. Uh, <laughs> yes, the day before yesterday morning. Now my, daughter, my daughter's only four. Mm. I, don't, I don't know what, quite you know, what motive you might have had in being there, but I, I invite you uh, to come clean. You know, what, what, what was your purpose actually? In, Oh, does your daughter go to a school in Islington by any chance? She does, yeah. Yes, I had a feeling she might do. Yeah. Uh, I was filming a documentary. I see. And that's uh, well, admit, I see. the well, fastest Boris. excuse I can come up with. I'm <laughs> <laughs> not surprised Boris lives in Islington. Well, it's not your kind of place yeah, really, I, Boris, is it? Is. Tony Couldn't Blair down the road. Yes. He's moved away, unfortunately. It was great. He's moved to Downing Street, you may have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not as much as you've noticed. <laughs> So what was the subject of your documentary? Um, oh, I forget now. Seems so long ago. <laughs> it's about temptation. <laughs> George Michael's got nothing on you, has he? 
Mm. I do promise it was just a documentary. Uh, <laughs> I have the footage to prove it. Um, teacher spokesman... Uh, <laughs> probably could have chosen a different expression, but... Um, uh, teacher spokesman uh, Peter Smith said of the government's initiative, the danger is that it smacks of Big Brother, which for any English A-level <laughs> students watching is a character from a book by a man called George Orwell. <laughs> Uh, Ian and Janet. Glenn Hoddle, faith healing crystal ball. That's me on holiday. I don't know what that's got to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on. Yuri Geller. This is obviously all about the fact that England's bid for the World Cup uh, can't be just based on footballing skills. Glenn Hoddle's got to bring in this woman that used to run a pub called Eileen, and he dated her daughter Michelle many, many moons ago, and ever since then he's believed in Eileen's powers as a faith healer. What does she do? I think she does that thing I had done to me once, where you kind of stand there and they do that aura cleansing, and they go round you like that, and you're supposed to feel a hell of a lot better, but actually... I don't. Anyway, mm. that's one little problem for England. Any other bloody football team would have sports psychologists and top physiotherapists, but no, we've got Eileen, an ex-barmaid. <laughs> hoping you're going to score a goal. There's nothing here about the, um, the ticket scandal, the yeah, France selling not? the tickets. Well, I phoned up at 8 o'clock in the morning, got yeah. through, got me tickets, but I left my phone off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that in the, in, there was, in the papers a few weeks ago? There was this fantastic picture of an evening class where they're teaching soccer fans useful French for the World Cup. <laughs> what does that include? Well, a lot of them, um, I can't repeat it, obviously, <laughs> on television. Otherwise, it would be a good anecdote. Mm. Yeah. No, I'm sorry about that. Oh, there's no need to be unpleasant to me, Paul. <laughs> is there? Oh, OK, I won't then. <laughs> um, yes, you are absolutely right. Well done. Uh, it is uh, Glenn Hoddle's faith healer, Eileen Drury, uh, practices her craft without actually using any uh, force or physical contact, a technique also employed by Gareth Southgate to take penalties. <laughs> Yuri Geller, who is employed as a consultant to uh, Reading Football Club, also claims to have sneaked into the stadium where England will play their first match and planted crystals of positive energy. <laughs> and Reading's current position in the first division. <laughs> and uh, finally, Paul and Boris. Mm -hmm. um, there are some oh, penguins uh, at uh, uh, the Antarctic. Perhaps. This is related to Oh, that's the, the bar that sunk the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> It's, so bad weather. it's something about <laughs> the items that relates to bad weather. It's a piece of cake. It's to do with the problems of weather. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, Good. Yeah. The gist, of, the gist of it is there's a large chunk of ice missing mm. from, uh, from the, tip of, uh, the tip of Antarctic, and this is this is this is this. And it's in Dennis Thatcher's gin and tonic. <laughs> yes. And what's it called? This. Uh... It's Larson. Larson ice shop. Larson B, I think it is. Larson B, that's right. And how big is it? One of the spice icebergs. <laughs> 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 what country was it's that that the bit was chipping off then? Antarctica. Right? Antarctica. Oh. Antarctica, <laughs> Antarctica, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so good they named it twice. <laughs> but I thought it was El Nino. No, it is caused by El Nino. All right. Yeah. Because so. everything's blamed by every, everything's blamed by El Nino now, isn't it? It is. Good blamed weather, by bad it. weather. Yeah, blamed on it as well. Oh, right, Boris, there's no need to connect, correct my grammar. No, I'm trying, sorry. It's right. Three and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought perhaps you meant something else. El, El Nino was blaming everything. What no, was I El was El Nino just blaming. You said El, everything is blamed by El Nino. I thought that was what? <laughs> El Nino was blaming. Yes. Anyway, calm down. Well, I've got All right, <laughs> yes, according to the PA Weather Centre, this was due to a surge of warm air. They earn their money. So the Russians they? are involved. <laughs> <laughs> a surge of what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sergei is a friend. Is a oh, it's all right, Boris. Let it go. Surge is a French name. In the end, the it French, won't be... It's the French who are involved, not the Russians. Don't that's pick on your end. own side, Boris. Yes, well, that's, that's Surge with an E, though, isn't it? Not with a U. Sorry, I'm joining in now. <laughs> so, uh, at the end of that round, uh, both teams have effectively sunk a brown one, in mm. snooker terms, of course, scoring four points each. <laughs> Round two has always been known as our tabloid headline round for reasons that would require too brief an explanation. Uh, Ian and Janet, Crybaby Britain. This is 
Uh, because the professor wrote the book, um, which everybody just picked out a bit about Princess Diana from, saying we're turning into a nation of wet. Professor O'Hare, mm -hmm. he wrote what, a, an essay in this book of essays. He wrote a piece about Diana saying everyone had, um, in a sense, lost control of their rational faculties and directed this sentiment towards a not terribly worthy cause. And um, it was quite an intellectual argument, and the Mirror responded by saying, he's a rat-faced little loser. And of course, <laughs> Tony, Tony Blair smelt a headline and le immediately leapt yeah. to her defence. Yes, Tony said, hey, I'm an emotional person. We're all in <laughs> <ourselves>. <laughs> Apart from Di, he attacked politicians for uh, giving up on real politics in favour of gesture politics. Yep. Uh, which Blair refuted in his speech about Deirdre's release from prison on Coronation <laughs> <laughs> uh, Friends of Di described the book as prejudiced nonsense, or as the Sun helpfully put it, Friends of Di killed in a Paris car smash described the book as prejudiced <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> oh, that Di! <laughs> uh, Paul and Boris, mm -hmm. your cryptic tease, Reservoir Jogs. <laughs> Ah, oh, this is the man who's in made an, uh, has invented uh, a uh, invention. Um, <laughs> he's, he's devised um, a thing which a pump that goes into the the sole and the heels of trainers, because trainers, if you wear them for a long time, can 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 be rather nasty, rather nasty smell. And and he's invented this little thing which pumps deodorant, very small amounts of deodorant, constantly into the shoe to stop it making a terrible smell. A perfect answer. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's and who is he? Having... Absolute silence. Doesn't matter. Yes. <laughs> Oh, is this about the parrot that's on a trampoline in Norway? <laughs> Why have we invented it for men um, who appear on television in those suits and then they start sweating? Have you ever seen that phenomena? Mm. No, no, you don't use something. No, no. I presented TV shows with sweaty men. Uh, and haven't we all? Wasn't well, that no, the one? They the have this title. very unattractive <laughs> stain, the little black mark that appears here, and then as the mm. program gets on, goes on, it gets bigger and bigger. So you get these other sort of things where you, they got they're called air soles. Yeah. Pump, I think it's air soles, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or is that the people that wear them? You get the, you, and you pump them up. Why does everybody wear trainers nowadays, anyway? Because they're Why very not? comfortable. Yeah. And they right. have a reservoir in them. Okay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And the wash companies have given up. No, I just on wondered. No, I just wanted because I went. I went to this school where for, for delinquent children. Where? Um, in your borough. Well, no, you went one. to Eton, yeah. Boris. <laughs> 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 As he says, he went to a school for delinquent <laughs> children. <laughs> I asked, and I asked the headmistress, "Do they polish? You know, do they polish their shoes nowadays?" And she said she laughed at me, and said, uh, "No, they, people don't polish their shoes anymore." But anyway, I just thought it was worth pointing out. It was. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, but thanks. maybe not now. <laughs> Yes, uh, it is the invention of a special new sweet-smelling trainer uh, by designer Peter Chown. Uh, after he noticed his grandson's foot odour, all he does is squirt a small amount of deodorizing. I said, I said all this. <laughs> What's this for the He's public again. record or something? <laughs> yeah. He's reading it out in a grammatically correct fashion. Yes. Boris has approved this text. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case people... So how do oh, these shoes actually work that I'm not saying? Well, you see the inventor, Peter Chow, who Peter is... Peter Chow, really? Yes, he lives in Lincolnshire. Yeah, the Lincolnshire. He came yeah. up a moment ago. He was the man with the parrot. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky to follow the plot on this show, I know. But do try. Um, Mr. Chown yes. uh, has designed things as diverse as uh, the black box used on aircraft and domestic pan scourers. His inventing career began when he had the idea of attaching a toughened pad of wire wool to one side of a piece of foam, but that didn't seem to record any flight information. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, which distasteful remarks mean at the end of this leg that uh, both teams are still kicking their heels, neither progressing further than six. Very good. Uh, round three is our odd one out, a game for all the family, especially if you're under four. Paul, Donald Dewar, Stephen Bailey, Ian Paisley, and Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, one chap seems to be picking his nose. So, so, is that, okay. <laughs> and so he's the odd one out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the person who was sitting in your seat last week, in fact, Boris. Oh, right. Mm. I see. So I wouldn't <laughs> touch underneath it. Um, <laughs> Leon, Le Leonard, Leo, Leonardo, Leo? 
Um, he hasn't, he hasn't opened his eyes. He had no. <laughs> I've turned into Eddie Izzard. <laughs> I wish I had his money. Um, and his frocks. <laughs> is Ian Paisley the only man who's stalked by a maniac who gets hold of hedgehogs, rubs them up in feathers, sticks them on sticks, and then goes and <laughs> follows him everywhere he goes? <laughs> Uh, Look what you made me do. <laughs> it's about something that they don't do. They don't do. Um, Ian Paisley doesn't... Is it doing to do with alcohol? No, but... Or, or going to the pictures? Yes. Ah, Ian Paisley thinks that pictures going to the cinema is sinful, so he doesn't go to the cinema, Donald Dewey doesn't go to the cinema, Stephen Bailey famously, oh, I am too posh for all that. Um, and, <laughs> and Leo is in films, so he's the odd one out. Is the right answer? Yes. I can't believe it. There you go. Uh, Boris, your glamorous showbiz chums are Sean Connery, <laughs> Bob Hope, Rupert Murdoch, <coughs> yep. and Jimmy yeah, Savile. This is about, this is about, um, uh, <laughs> it could be about knighthoods. Hmm, knighthoods, yeah. Yep, because Sean Connery was offered a knighthood. No, no it wasn't, not, wasn't. Not, Anyway, we're not on Jimmy Savile. That's got a knighthood. He's got a knighthood. Right. So is Bob, so Bob Hope. Bob Hope's got a so, knighthood. So, okay, so the point is that <laughs> the chap, the chap, it's, the, it's Murdoch on the grounds that he hasn't yet got a knighthood. But he has. Murdoch's got a papal knighthood. The so Pope has decorated Murdoch for his <coughs> long right. commitment to the family. Did he use the same to bring okay, it up? Okay, in that case, in it's, that, it's Sean well, Connery. It's Sean. It is, in fact, that they've all been made papal knights with the exception of Sean Connery. So you've got the right person and you've got the right reason so you can have one point each. Oh, how lovely. Thank That's you. Right. Right. They've all been made yeah. papal knights. Bob Hope. Too late to say that. Right. Yes. <laughs> but only just too late. <laughs> too late by about that much. I see, sorry. Uh, Sean Connery was recently rejected for a British knighthood because of his alleged attitude to violence against women. Uh, he once said, I don't think there is anything particularly wrong in hitting a woman, although I don't recommend doing it in the same way that you'd hit a man. An open-handed slap is justified if all other alternatives fail and there's been plenty of warning. <laughs> Uh, Janet, good point, well made. Oh. You <laughs> but you better not try hitting me. I'll pack a mean punch. <laughs> you know you're talking to James Bond. I, <laughs> thought, I thought you packed a mean lunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Janet, your even more familiar faces are yourself, <laughs> William Haig, Cecil Parkinson, and Christine Hamilton. There I am in my Wonder Woman outfit. Was that a good party? I had seven inch platform soles on and the only thing I attracted all night was Paul McKenna in the kind of crotch area because all the men were very, very tiny. <laughs> <laughs> and so I digress. <laughs> right, yes. OK. <clears throat> the odd one out, well, it's quite hard because um, initially I thought the odd one out was William Hay because he is the least famous person of these <laughs> people. <laughs> now, well, Christine Hamilton and I are obviously both battle axes. No, 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 Sorry. no, no, right. she isn't Too one late. at all. It is uh, to do with uh, the difference between you and Cecil earlier Chromosomes. in your life. Earlier in my life? <laughs> it's something that you did... Uh, well, I haven't got my secretary pregnant and then not married her. <laughs> well, I'll take your word no, for that it. that would have um, made the headlines. <laughs> it's a political question. Oh, I was in the Young Conservatives quiz team when I was at school. And Cecil Parkinson wasn't. Uh. And he was in the Young Socialists. Is that Therefore, a correct good, yes. Therefore, William Hague, what do we think he might have been in? The Young Socialists. <laughs> 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 so the odd one out, Cecil Parkinson. Is the right answer. Oh. Oh. I was in the Young Conservatives quiz team because they had pretty good prizes, but after about two months that, I switched to the Young Socialist quiz team because they had wine and cheese evenings and the blokes were sexier. <laughs> Janet recently, in fact, uh, described how her appearance in those days gave her her first showbiz break. <laughs> I wore bizarre clothes, sooty black false eyelashes, white makeup and dyed pink hair. I was spotted in this garb and given a part in a film, <laughs> presumably the Ronald McDonald story. <laughs> uh, soon after... I think she looked great. Mm. You think she looked great? Well, I think everybody's been a bit unfair. Well, come on, rally around someone. Yeah, I thought... I thought... <laughs> Boris, I think you're very chivalrous, but sadly, yeah. I can't defend myself, you know. Right. Yes. <laughs> you're not going to win with that one over there. <laughs> <laughs>
soon after leaving the Young Conservatives, William Hague began writing speeches for Geoffrey Howe. Uh, their speech writing sessions would often stretch late into the night when one of them would jerk awake and suggest they go home. It's <laughs> uh, an unfortunate phrase, but the point. Thank I don't believe this can go on the television. And, uh, no, it doesn't. It's it's just, this doesn't go on the television. This doesn't go on the television. It goes no. out on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ian, your four way split comprises uh, Monica Lewinsky, Tiny Rowland, Camilla Parker Bowles, and Linda Tripp. I think this is a tape question about being taped. Um, Monica Lewinsky was taped by Linda Tripp. Um, she pretended to be her friend and said, Tell us about the president. What did you get up to? And Monica did. Um, Camilla Parker Bowles was taped talking to Charles, the Prince of Wales. Tiny Rowland was taped talking to Al Fired by Fired, in which Fired talked about the size of his genitals. So they were all they were all taped except Linda Trip who did the taping. Is a perfect dancer. Well done. <laughs> I'm surprised you gave me this one. Why? Boris was caught on tape as well. Ha ha ha, rigidly comic, yes, that's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, what was that? <laughs> I said it was written a good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, ha ha ha, richly comic, mm. which it jolly well was. <laughs> what were you recorded saying? I t can you, honestly, I don't remember. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Boris was on tape talking to Darius Guppy. His a very great man. I don't want to be totally stitched up here. I <laughs> <laughs> what you want and what you don't want. <laughs> no, he was a school friend, wasn't he? A great chap. Yeah. And That's a great right. chap, yeah. despite went, being went, a convicted fraudster. Convicted fraudster. Convicted fraud. Went very, very sadly wrong. Yeah. yeah. Major goof. And one of the ways he went wrong is ringing you up on tape and suggesting that you help him beat up a journalist who was looking into him. That did come up. <laughs> I, I won't deny that did come up. That, I, I think I don't think I've ever commented on this before, so I'd better watch my words very carefully. That mm. did come up. That oh. did come up. It's perfectly true that Darius and I had a long and rambling conversation, which took in many heroes of many military heroes. That Darius admired Rommel, hence Major Goof that you Rommel. mentioned just now. <laughs> and since you choose to bring up this unhappy episode, I yep. won't. I won't deny a word of it. I won't. I, I'm not ashamed of it. I did discuss how... You sound like George Michael. You're not ashamed of it. <laughs> what are you not ashamed of, though, Boris? <coughs> Whatever there is not to be ashamed of. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's... He was trying to get the address of this journalist out of you, wasn't he? Yes, and owing to my great incompetence as a journalist, I wasn't able to provide mm, it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the yeah. journalist didn't get beaten up in the end, but no thanks to <sighs> you. I suppose you could say it was thanks to me that you didn't get beaten up. Because you didn't do what you told your mate you'd do. But that seems to be perfectly reasonable. I suppose, yeah. I suppose, I suppose there's, there's, That's there's perfectly an element, reasonable. An element. Yeah, didn't yeah. you go to university with him? I did, he was at my college. Well, what are you thing. talking about then? Exactly. <laughs> I wasn't a friend of his. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I never made his acquaintance, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, how posh. More tea, they got... <laughs> That's a lovely impression you have. <laughs> That's you. That's you. <laughs> hey, I went to Oxford, didn't you? Know? <laughs> Let, we walked through the quadrangle with our mortarboards on. <laughs> so where's the Darius or Darius now then? Darry. Sorry, where's Darry? Darry. Where does he live Darry. now? I don't know where he is now. I don't know where he is now. I thought he lives in Allthorpe House, doesn't he? <sighs> Look, I don't know what been. You better ring him up. <laughs> I'm way out of my depth here. I've been yes. totally stitched up. I want it on the record. I, I walked straight into a massive elephant trap. I should have spotted it. <laughs> <laughs> this man. Oh, yes, this man. You must not. This man you mustn't, you mustn't, you mustn't, you mustn't think of, you mustn't think of your... This man Hislop is quoting verbatim a conversation I had on the phone sort of ten years ago. Yeah, because yeah, it's a terribly funny transcript which I have a copy of. <laughs> And I read it, it in my magazine whenever humanly possible. <laughs> Usually when you've made some right-wing speech about law and order, and I try and remind you that you were involved in a conspiracy. I've never made a right-wing speech about law and order. Never... <laughs> Hit him. Well, you I should have done. You're a Tory candidate. <laughs> Hit him. I might be. I might be. Well, I might be. Yeah, right.
<laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway no harm came of it. The, all's well yeah. that ends well. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And that's uh, my view. That's yeah. Yeah. You're right. okay. I'm sticking right. to it. Right. had a happy right, ending. And yeah. Darius ended up in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Did Darius pronounce it Brighton prison? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he was at Ford. No, he started off at Brixton. Oh, did he? Sorry. I believe. <laughs> um, I did a documentary you... about it. Uh, <laughs> oh, the... Is that really? Is that really? You did a documentary about it? <laughs> <laughs> did he? You did it. <laughs> well, you seem jolly well briefed on the whole thing. Yes. Uh, the answer is that they've all had uh, their nightmare. private telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Telephone conversation. Let's go home. Let's just have nothing to do. Pack, pack, pack it in. Yeah, we don't care. Uh, <laughs> which um, phony exchanges mean it's uh, no longer good to talk. As uh, at the end of the day, uh, Paul and Boris are on the receiving end, trailing as they do 11 9. And so to the weekly relief of our final Missing Words round, uh, featuring this week's guest publication, the never less than interesting <laughs> Rambling Today. My People's Magazine. Do you get a free one then, being a... Uh... No, I subscribe. Thank mm. you. Write the occasional article for it. Do they have rambling articles? You know, like, the thing is, well, I mean, how would you put it? <laughs> get to the point. So let's plough on with flooding is caused by what? Lots of water. Water. Rain, rain, abundant rain. Yeah. Well, lots of uh, Actually, um, I, I do know the answer to this because it was in um, the papers. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it's not... It's not... It's, hang on, it's not, it's not water. It's the answer is not... The answer is not, answer is not water. Oh, it's, in fact, houses. The poor planning is how they put it. Uh, next, children are not what, say teachers? Allowed to talk to Angus Deaton. <laughs> On the contrary, I talked to many yeah. of them. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, fashion accessories is, uh, is the answer. This Ooh. is according to David Blunkett. The next, Astra Chimps in what? White wine sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it is, in fact, uh, custody row. And uh, finally, what is a mountain? Ben, ben Nevis. Nevis. <laughs> <laughs> Same time. Incredible. Is it Extremely. right? Uh, no. Oh. Well, it, it is. Um... <laughs> Janet. Rambling. Janet is not a mountain, no. <laughs> the tall, thin one. The answer is, in fact, what is a mountain? Oh. Um, all of which uh, descent means the end of tonight's aimless tramp, and after the final assault, this week's dull plodders appear to be Paul and Boris with 12, whilst this week's rambling roses are Ian and Janet with 13. And I leave you with news that in the West End, business is brisk at London's first Korean takeaway. <laughs> Organisers admit that it may have been a mistake to arrange a 9am start for the legalised cannabis rally. <laughs> and Robert Robinson concedes that he may have had one facelift too many. <laughs> Good night. Manchester band James and jazz soul legend George Benson joined Jules Holland 